we've been talking about creating a network, and one of the first things we need to do when we create a network is we have to figure out how we're going to connect our devices. And in the previous video, we saw that we could connect our devices using wires, and that the three most common types of wired connections between devices, the three different types of wires we could use, would be Ethernet, coaxial cable, or fiber optic wires. So those three ways we could connect with wires. What if we are going to do it wirelessly? How are we going to connect wirelessly? Uh, well, there's a couple of different things I'm sure you've heard of when uh, talking about computers and connecting computers like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, or even maybe you've heard of microwave signals or infrared signals. And these are all wireless ways that we could connect different devices. And so you could go to Wikipedia and you could read about Wi-Fi. And uh, there's the 802.11 standard, right, which is a standard set out by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. And there's very various uh, iterations of the standard. So there's 802.11 A, B, G, N. They put different letters after the end of them. And, uh, and it seems like invariably every year or two, they come out with a new and improved version of 802.11. So how do you tell which is the new version of 802.11? You could just go to Google and say, uh, you know, most current 802.11 and hit enter. And, uh, and you could read about, see there's B, there's G. You could read about what's, <laughs> what's the most current one, right? Or you could just go to Best Buy and ask the guy what's the most expensive wireless router and they'll tell you. So we're connecting things wirelessly, which really kind of drags us into the electromagnetic spectrum. And here you could see, uh, you know, different devices generating, sending off different wireless, you know, frequencies, waves, and uh, like, you know, the different waves that they could communicate at. And all these ripples here in this diagram are all these wireless waves that are being sent back and forth. Um, what, what exactly does that mean? What am I talking about? Well, Wikipedia, you can read about the electromagnetic spectrum, but I found this little diagram, which I like even better, but don't look at all the stuff in the middle. We're just going to look at this thing over here on the sidebar to read a little definition of the electromagnetic spectrum, because I really like the way they, they defined it. And I am not an engineering physics guy, so this is a, all sort of, you know, <laughs> learning territory for me, too. The energy from the sun and other objects in the universe travels to Earth in waves. So energy from the sun and other objects travels to the Earth in waves that we call electromagnetic waves. All these waves travel at the speed of light, which in space is 300 kilometers per second. Although the waves all travel at the same speed, they may go up and down quickly, have a short wavelength, while others go up and down slowly, have a long wavelength. And so these would be the ones out at this end of the spectrum that have the long wavelength. And then down here, these would be the ones at the short wavelength. And this would be like radioactive material down here at this end of the spectrum. And I actually like this diagram for looking at the spectrum better. So here you have the radioactive short wavelength waves. And here you have, you know, the longer wavelengths out here. An interesting thing to notice here is here you have ionizing radiation. So when things have a higher, more intense frequency, they have a, a, a denser wavelength, right, a higher frequency, that, that type of wavelength is ionizing, which means it's going to hit your cells and it'll, like, strip away electrons. And it starts to damage and change, actually, physically, your cells. That's why radiation is dangerous. And uh, that can cause cancer. It could hit your DNA and mutate the DNA. But out here, we have non-ionizing radiation. And so that doesn't uh, mess it up. <laughs> so that's the difference there between ionizing and non-ionizing. You can also think of these waves as, waves as if they are made up of packets of energy called photons with different amounts of energy. So they are both waves, right? Or you can think of them as packets of energy called photons with different amounts of energy. Long wavelength waves have low energy, right? And uh, while those with short wavelengths have high energy. So these would be like lower energy out here, and these would be higher energy over here. We call this entire range of waves of different lengths the electromagnetic spectrum. In this spectrum, vary, uh, wavelengths vary from several kilometers long to smaller than an atom. The frequency of a wave is simply the number of times that the top of the wave passes 0.1 second. This is called the cycles per second, and the scientific unit is hertz. The wavelength of an electromagnetic wave 
times this frequency equals the speed of light, whatever that means. All right. So uh, I'm pointing this out because here you can start to see, okay, Wi-Fi is 2400 to 2483 megahertz, right? And we can see that here, like on the spectrum, Wi-Fi is 2.4 uh, gigahertz. So a giga would be a thousand megas, right? So there we have megas. Here we have Wi-Fi. Here we also have microwave ovens. Here we also have radar. And here we also have mobile phones. So, the, you know, I like this idea that all this stuff is non-ionizing, meaning it's not going to cause cancer. But it's kind of interesting that your Wi-Fi router and your cellular phone and the microwave that makes water boil <laughs> are all kind of right in the same category. And so there's some technology I'm sure going on there which uh, makes this more intense for heating up food and this a little bit less intense. But as I pointed out before, right, uh, cell phones say, use them a little bit away from your head. Don't hold them right next to your head. If you use it right next to your head, it'll actually warm up your head. Uh, so just something to think about. But really, that's not that far away from FM radio or AM radio. So I'm not quite so sure at what point certain frequencies might become dangerous because go over here a little bit more and this is actually the visible light spectrum right here and here's like sun tanning booths right there right which is right next to you know starting to get over into this area so night vision right there here's the, oh this is all the visible wavelength right here huh interesting so anyhow, controversy has arisen again about whether holding a cell phone next to the head for too many minutes a day threatens the brain with electromagnetic radiation. The preponderance of evidence, so the majority of evidence, continues to indicate there is no threat. Many people do not realize, however, that we are increasingly surrounded by technologies that emit radiation in the same radio frequency portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, Wi-Fi routers, Bluetooth transmitters, and read more. As the graphic above shows, radiation emitted in this region is non-ionizing and may heat molecules in the body, but does not ionize them, that is, set electrons free. Ionizing radiation, which can tear molecules apart and therefore potentially damage DNA, is the greater worry. So this stuff would be the greater worry out here. And while this stuff can heat molecules, it doesn't tear those electrons apart. And if we click read more, what do we get? Uh, we get uh, this image here, which we were just looking at. So let's go back and look at that. So what does that say? You cannot see them, but radio waves pervade your peaceful living space. They emanate from an increasingly large menagerie of electronic gadgets, appliances, and satellites. So, you know, this menagerie of electronic gadgets, appliances, and satellites, all these radio waves emanating from them. FM radio and broadcast television have been around for years. More recently, cell phones and Wi-Fi routers have added their high frequencies to the mix. So we've got Wi-Fi routers. We've got a cell phone right there. Should we worry? In May, the International Agency for Research on Cancer declared that long-term cell phone use could possibly cause cancer. It says the same for coffee drinking, right? So the same agency said coffee could possibly cause cancer. The intensity of exposure is proportional to distance, and cell phones are held close to the brain, but many studies conclude that evidence of a cancer link is non-existent. The sheer number of radio frequency sources is not a concern either, they say. So kind of interesting. But it's also just sort of interesting to look here, right, and uh, realize that the way wireless devices work is they're sending these radio waves, these electromagnetic magnetic waves through the air uh, from one device to another. And, and just like we can see light, uh, these devices can be trained to recognize waves of a certain wavelength and, you know, understand them and do something with them. So here we have Wi-Fi, and here we have cell phones, and here we have the cordless phone just in the house, and here we have a Bluetooth, and here we have a tablet with Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi is 2400 to 2483, and we see that here and also there. And that is, you know, covering the spectrum where the microwave oven is 2450. So 2450 falls right in the middle. So again, right, don't sleep with your head on your Wi-Fi router because it's emitting wavelengths of the same frequency as your microwave. They'll probably, maybe not as many of them, not as, I don't know how that all works. But then your Bluetooth transmitter, again, right, how's Bluetooth different from Wi-Fi? They're using the same frequency, it hops between 2400 and 2480. So just kind of a, an interesting thing to, to look at. So that'd be 2.4 gigahertz. You know, it's basically what that's saying right there. 
But uh, uh, that's how your uh, wireless devices work. It starts to drag us into the electromagnetic spectrum. And this is where those devices would fall on the electromagnetic magnetic spectrum. Bluetooth would be there, right? Or would be there also. So uh, wireless networks, Wi-Fi. And then finally, we have infrared connections. So infrared connections, infrared would be uh, right here. Here's the infrared spectrum right there. And for infrared to work, where do you see infrared connections? Uh, a lot of times they're on remote controls. That's where you find them today. Generally speaking, like if you look at these devices here, like, yeah, those are old looking devices. And, uh, and an infrared connector, again, if you look at like, here's an infrared port, but look at how old that, that computer, that laptop is looking. All right, in there. And so generally speaking, that's not something that's used uh, much for computers. But uh, what you do get it with still some is remote controls. And so if you ever notice, like, your remote control of your TV, if you've got a pillow in the way and your remote's not working, but you move the pillow or you reach up over the coffee table and aim it at the TV or, you know, I have to aim mine kind of at the stereo sound control down on the other side of the coffee table. And so I reach up and I go like that. And that's because infrared is line of sight. It's actually sending light, which is outside of our ability to see it, Right. And uh, and and if something's blocking that light, those wavelengths aren't getting through. And so that's infrared. And uh, this is all the visible wavelengths right here, right on the middle there. Uh, this is an introduction to uh, wireless networking. And the main things you want to take from it is that you will hear terms like Wi-Fi. You will hear terms like Bluetooth. You'll hear terms like microwave sometimes, microwave signals like, you know, for connecting different locations, and you'll hear about infrared. These are the types of connections you'll hear about. Sometimes you'll hear Wi-Fi called a hotspot or a wireless access point, also known as a WAP, or 80211, right? And so when you hear WAP, hotspot, wireless access point, 80211, Wi-Fi, that's all interchangeable. <laughs> Those are all just different words for the same thing. And even when you hear Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, right, microwave, you know, when we talk about what frequency, what, ele what you know, frequency is being used, radio wave or whatever, the radio spectrum, what frequency is being used to send a signal from one location to another, uh, you know, uh, that's actually a really good way to say it. What, what radio spectrum frequency is being used to send a signal from one location to another, like with AM radio or FM radio, right? We have a, a radio frequency that's going from one location to another. So regardless of what we call the technology, it all comes back down to sending uh, a signal along the radio spectrum from one location to another, one location to another. And so now you kind of know where some of those fall on this electromagnetic spectrum. And you're aware of the electromagnetic spectrum, and you're aware that there is the ionizing part of the electromagnetic spectrum where electrons get ripped off and your DNA could get damaged and that could cause cancer. And there's the non-ionizing radiation on the electromagnetic spectrum, right? But that, 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 uh, you know, that the, those frequencies on the electromagnetic spe spectrum can still like boil water because <laughs> your microwave and the wireless data and mobile phones are all right there in the same one. So that's a little bit about wireless networking. And the thing you should take away is that you now know that Wi-Fi hotspot, wireless access point, WAP, 80211, those are all interchangeable ways to say this is a, a Wi-Fi connection. And here's the symbol for Wi-Fi connections. And you'll sometimes see it like this too, the wireless ac access point, wireless icon. And then Bluetooth is another type of wireless way we could connect devices. And uh, yeah, you know, and then these you don't hear about quite so much. But those are the two main ones you hear about. And what they refer to is uh, what kind of signal is being sent on the electro electronic ma electro electromagnetic spectrum and uh, what technology is being used to, you know, what standards are being used to um, receive and interpret those signals. All right, so that's a little bit about wireless networking.